A young woman worked nights as a waitress to help her younger brother pay for his education. But when she saw who had left the generous tip, her world turned upside down. The life of Mariana Caldera was never easy. She barely remembered her childhood, only vague images came to mind. These images were filled with an indistinct anxiety and fear, so she tried not to think about them at all. Sometimes they haunted her in nightmares, and then she would wake up in a cold sweat. She would stare into the darkness for a long time, convincing herself that she was now completely safe and had nothing to fear. Her real and bright memories began from the new home they moved to with her mother and younger brother, Mateo. In essence, it was a dormitory. Their little room was not elegant or luxurious, but it was there that their new life began. Sonora Caldera, her mother, was forced to move to another city after a divorce and literally start life anew. It wouldn't have been so hard if she had been alone, but she had two children to care for. Mariana vividly remembers how her mother started from the very bottom so that the three of them could survive. She always tried to make her mother's life easier, seeing how difficult it was for her. In fact, she raised Mateo while Sonora Caldera gradually climbed the career ladder. This was not a story of instant success. The woman worked long and hard to achieve a good position and a decent salary, and when she finally succeeded, she could breathe a sigh of relief. Now she could be home more often and spend more time with the children for whom she had worked so hard. Speaking of home, this small family went through a real journey, from a dormitory and rented apartments to their own large house, where each of them had their own personal space. See, dear, I told you that everything would get better soon. Sonora Caldera would say with a smile to her daughter when they finally finished arranging their family nest. I always believed in you, Mom, the girl would reply, hugging her mother joyfully. She so hoped that from that day on, their little family would never be in need again. You're the best, right, Mateo? What are you talking about? I thought that goes without saying, it's an axiom, the passing teenager immediately supported his sister. It was around that time that Mariana was able to enroll in the university of her dreams. She needed nothing more, unlike Mateo, who had been spoiled even under limited financial conditions. Both sister and mother tried not to deprive him of his childhood, so he was never made aware of the family's financial troubles and always got what he wanted. The family lived in relative prosperity for a few years. Mariana was close to finishing her studies, Mateo was on the verge of graduating from school, and everything would have been fine if tragedy hadn't struck one day. Sonora Caldera was hospitalized. Everyone thought it was just exhaustion, but the reality was far more terrifying. It was cancer. This terrible disease, which had shattered so many lives, had finally reached this long-suffering family. The stage was quite advanced, but the doctors were optimistic. The main thing was to undergo treatment. All of the family's savings went into the hope of remission. Doctor, I can't die. What will they do without me? Our lives have just started to get better, the woman cried as soon as her children left the room. What had happened to her had severely shaken her morale. She knew she could fight their financial situation, but how could she fight something for which there was no guaranteed cure? We will do everything we can to help you, but you must understand that your illness can be unpredictable, her doctor replied sternly. The man had long developed the cynicism typical of his profession, but somehow this woman and her children had managed to touch his heart. At one point, Sonora Caldera felt better, and she even returned home from the hospital, but unfortunately, this period did not last long. A sudden deterioration, attempts to stabilize her condition using money set aside for Mateo's education, and ultimately, her inevitable death. She faded away in just a few days. Before she died, she managed only to call her sister, with whom she kept in touch. The woman begged her not to abandon her children to their fate. She was terrified of the thought that after she was gone, they would be left on the fringes of life. The news reached her children early in the morning. Mateo immediately locked himself in his room, not wanting to show his tears even to his sister. As for Mariana, she wandered around the house like a shadow, trying to pull herself together. She knew she needed to do something, but what? What do children do when they lose their mother? 
Mariana was disoriented and almost unaware of what was happening until she saw her mother in the coffin. It was at that moment she realized she was now an adult because up until then, Sonora Caldera had done everything she could to prolong her childhood. Throughout the funeral ceremony, she clung to her equally pale brother like a lifeline. The young man tried his best to be her support during this difficult time, but he was barely holding on himself. It was terrifying for both of them to see the coffin being lowered into the ground and then buried. Terrifying and unnatural. That day, they buried their mother, along with all their shared dreams of a happy future, their plans, and their hopes. Mariana came to her senses only when she realized that no one else was left beside the fresh mound of earth but her. This triggered a new wave of hysteria. Mom. Mom, don't worry, she sobbed, kneeling by her mother's grave. The girl tried to pull herself together, but she just couldn't. I promise you, I will be as strong as you were. And I will always take care of Mateo, no matter what it costs me. I swear. But how could she keep that promise when she knew she would never be granted guardianship of Mateo? At that moment, Mariana didn't think about it. At that point, it was her only anchor, keeping her tied to this life. Just a few hours later, she learned that her mother had taken care of that too. Aunt Delfina had patiently waited for her niece to regain her composure, and then, making sure the girl was listening, she told her about Sonora Caldera's last wishes. Mariana refused to leave the house, arguing that she would soon find a job and support herself. She also wanted to keep Mateo with her, but by law, he had to live under the same roof as his guardians. She had to come to terms with this. However, the girl managed to get a few days to pack up all of Mateo's belongings. Delfina understood that it would not be easy for the children to part after the nightmare they had been through, so she gave them three days. Meanwhile, she and her husband prepared a room for Mateo. On the first day, the brother and sister couldn't find the words to say to each other. For some reason, it suddenly felt awkward. They just packed their things into boxes, exchanging brief, almost obligatory phrases. It wasn't until the afternoon that they realized they would soon be going their separate ways and wouldn't be able to see each other as often. The dam of words and tears burst. They talked and talked, discussing the past, remembering their mother, and making plans for the future. You can always call me and share anything, even if something happens in the middle of the night, Marianne assured him, squeezing his hand. Who else would I call if not you? Matteo reassured her. He felt a heavy weight on his heart, but tried not to show it. He knew his sister was going through a tough time and didn't want to worry her even more. Their aunt returned three days later, as she had promised. She almost burst into tears herself when she saw their red, swollen eyes. Of course, she had expected it, but seeing it in reality shattered her heart. You're almost an adult, Aunt Delfina said. It pained her to see her niece and nephew clinging to each other, unable to simply say goodbye. It's not right for you to be shuffled around orphanages. Your mother thought the same, which is why she asked me. Besides, my husband and I don't have children of our own, so it will be nice to have someone to care for. Thank you so much, Mateo said sincerely. He hugged his sister tightly, knowing they would be apart for a long time. As soon as I get back on my feet, I promise to help him and you too, Marianne vowed, stroking his hair like their mother used to. But their aunt waved her hand dismissively, saying Marianne needed to focus on herself, especially since she didn't want to go with them. They could take care of Mateo themselves. So Marianne was left alone in the big house. She wandered through the rooms again, reminiscing about the good times and thinking about how many more they could have had if their mother hadn't died. She was so young, she could have lived so much longer. Maybe she would have even found a good man, and they would have had a complete family. So many would have flooded Marianne's mind until she forced herself to shift her focus. These thoughts only hurt more, so she needed to push them away. She needed to think about more practical matters. For example, why did she need such a big house all to herself? At first, she thought about selling the house and buying something smaller, using the remaining money to live on until she found a job, but she changed her mind. 
This wasn't just her house, it was Mateo's too. How could she sell it and leave her brother without his inheritance? Don't even think about selling or trading the house, scolded Marianne's best friend, Deborah, whom she had turned to for advice. What else can I do? How can I manage such a big house on my own? Marianne sighed. And I need money. It'll be a while before I find a job and get paid. Rent out a room. Yes, it's not the easiest solution. People can be different, but it's better than sitting without any money. Deborah suddenly paused for a moment, then her face lit up. Remember my cousin? Aurelio can't stay in the university dormitory anymore, so he's looking for a place to rent. You two got along well, so I think he's the perfect candidate. Marianne remembered him well. The young man was pleasant and polite. They even kept in touch occasionally, mostly exchanging holiday greetings. That's why she agreed. The money from this arrangement helped her a lot. As a young woman who had just finished her studies, it was difficult to find a job, but she never gave up, remembering that her mother also struggled when she first moved to the area. This gave her confidence and strength not to give up. She and Aurelio became close friends, almost like kindred spirits. Sometimes they would talk all night until morning, sharing the joys and sorrows that adult life had brought them. I've experienced the loss of a loved one too. My parents are still alive, thank God, but my grandmother passed away three years ago. Of course, it doesn't compare to your pain, but I can imagine how you feel. Aurelio did his best to show that she wasn't alone in her grief. Don't downplay your loss. If you're talking about it, it means she was important to you, right? Marianne smiled slightly at him. In his presence, the pain seemed to ease. Yes. You could say she raised me. Mom was busy with her studies at first, then with work. I don't blame her. She did it for me, but my grandmother was like a mother to me, he said, closing his eyes. It wasn't hard for him to talk about it. He had processed his grief long ago. Now, only a gentle sadness remained in his memories. Being around Aurelio made things easier. She even managed to enter her mother's room without breaking down in tears. For her, that was a victory. It was there that she stumbled upon a small jewelry box. Marianne was surprised by the discovery. She had thought that all of her mother's jewelry had been sold to pay for her treatment. From that day on, she always wore a pendant that Signora Caldera had bought to celebrate getting the job she wanted. For some reason, Marianne didn't want it to just sit and gather dust. Her mother loved it, so it shouldn't just be stored away. So she continued with her life. She went to work, paid the bills, and occasionally went out with friends. The pain was still there, but she had learned to live with it. Yes, it was hard, but she wouldn't have been her mother's daughter if she had been weak. She didn't forget about Mateo either. They regularly spoke on the phone and saw each other on weekends when possible. Marianne missed her brother terribly, but she knew he was better off with his new family. They could provide more for him than she could. Her opinion changed when it was time for Mateo to apply to university. During one of their calls, her brother seemed upset about something, so Marianne had to coax him for a long time to get him to talk about his worries. No one's mistreating me if that's what you were thinking. Aunt Delfina and Uncle Gennaro are wonderful people, really, he assured her. Then what's the problem, she asked, her voice full of concern. She knew her brother's character well. He wouldn't get upset over something trivial. You see, they earn less than mom did in recent years. They also help their parents financially. They can afford to pay for my university, but not the one where we plan to apply with mom. That's what's bothering me. She wanted me to study where she did. Don't worry about it. I'm sure we'll find a solution, she tried to reassure him. After saying goodbye to her brother, Marianne began searching the house, hoping to find anything that could help financially. Maybe she had missed something? Aurelio helped her, but it was all in vain. All the bank cards they found were empty, and she couldn't bring herself to sell the few pieces of jewelry her late mother had left. That seemed too sacrilegious. What do I do now? She sighed in frustration. My income isn't enough to cover his education. 
Maybe you shouldn't beat yourself up so much. Aurelio placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. He couldn't bear to see her so desperate. He'll still get an education. You don't understand. Marianne was almost in tears from helplessness. I swore to help him, but what have I done? I didn't get custody. I can't pay for university. What kind of sister am I? You're a wonderful sister, worrying about him so much, he tried to reach her, as he usually did, but this time something went wrong. He couldn't manage to distract her from the situation. Over the next few days, Marianne frantically searched for side jobs that would work well with her main job. But none of them were suitable, the pay was just too low. All of this drove her to despair. She couldn't understand how people found second or even third jobs with decent pay. Maybe she was looking in the wrong places? Or maybe others were involved in something illegal? She didn't want that for herself. Or perhaps she just wasn't desperate enough to grab onto anything just to survive. Aurelio advised her to reach out to Deborah. Deborah always had various side jobs that she took up whenever she wanted to buy something expensive. And he was right. How had she not thought of it herself? She knew that her friend had a lot of ways to make money. Wasting no time, she called her. She didn't mention why she needed the money, fearing that Deborah, like Aurelio, might try to talk her out of it. Deborah listened to her and asked for some time to think about where she could find a good opportunity, saying she would also call around and see if anyone was hiring. Mariana promised to wait and hung up. About 10 minutes later, Deborah called back with a single option, a waitress at a nightclub. Are you serious? The girl exclaimed. That place is full of shady people. Just listen to me first, her friend interrupted. It's a good place, upscale. They don't let just anyone in. The pay is good, plus tips on top. Besides, the security is excellent. If someone tries anything, they'll get kicked out immediately. Just go for it. Mariana promised to think about it before making any decisions. She spent a long time weighing the pros and cons, consulting with Aurelio and listening to her own feelings. Could she handle something like this? Especially considering she hated large crowds. Yes, she was an introvert, but could that really stand in the way of her desire to help Matteo? After all, by helping him, she would also be fulfilling her mother's dream, and that was clearly worth it. That's why she decided to go through with it. She called Deborah back and asked for the nightclub's number. But Deborah replied that she would have to go there in person to negotiate, and she offered to accompany her, saying that with a recommendation from a former employee, she would definitely be hired. Mariana was grateful to her. She had been nervous even during the interview for her main job, let alone for a side job in such a specific place. With Deborah's help, everything went smoothly, and she was scheduled for her first shift the very next night. Not everything went smoothly right away, but the girl didn't give up, constantly reminding herself why she was doing this. Thoughts of her family gave her strength as she got used to her new routine. It was not easy for her at all. She almost fell asleep during the day, receiving reprimands from her main job. She had to practically live on coffee and energy drinks just to function. It was so difficult that sometimes she would go to the bathroom not out of physical need, but just to cry. If Mariana had been weaker, she would have definitely given up and reconsidered her plans, as it was causing her immense psychological stress. But when she saw the substantial tips, which were on top of her base pay, she realized it was all worth it. She would gather the money for Mateo faster. Her brother had no idea what his sister was doing. She told him that while cleaning their mother's room, she had found a hidden stash of money, which would be enough to cover his education. So, she would just give him the money as needed for tuition. The only person who knew the full story was Aurelio, as Deborah didn't even suspect how deeply her friend had gotten involved in this side job. He repeatedly urged Mariana to slow down, to at least take fewer shifts so she could sleep more. He even offered to help her financially so she wouldn't have to work herself to the bone, but she refused every time. No, I can't do that, she firmly responded to his latest offer. These are my problems to solve. I can handle it, really. 
You don't need to worry about me so much, really. I'm strong. You are, but let's be honest. You're clearly not managing. Have you seen the dark circles under your eyes? Makeup won't be able to hide them soon. Aurelio was clearly frustrated with her stubbornness. Together, they could have handled this faster, and she could have broken out of this vicious cycle of exhaustion. Why won't you let me help you? I've told you a hundred times why. Why do you keep insisting? Mariana was puzzled. She simply couldn't understand why he cared so much about her problems. Because it's unbearable to watch someone you love destroy themselves, he exclaimed in frustration, turning away. This was not how he wanted to confess his feelings, but the words were already out. Mariana was startled by this confession. She liked Aurelio too, but at that moment, she just couldn't afford to think about anything other than work. She had neither the energy nor the time for a relationship. I won't pressure you, he quickly added, seeing how her expression changed. I understand perfectly well that this is unexpected for you. They had to put the topic aside for better times. Mariana promised to discuss their feelings once she had saved up the necessary amount and the young man had no choice but to agree. He knew very well that she wouldn't back down from her goal and if he was honest, he admired that about her. He just hoped that the nightclub job would end soon. The money for the first year of tuition was gathered by the time Matteo turned 18. Mariana wouldn't have been herself if she had only shown up at his birthday with that money. Only she knew how much she had to save on everything possible to also give him a brand new laptop as a gift. Sis, you shouldn't have. He was even flustered to see that the gift was not cheap at all. My old laptop still works fine. So what? I can afford to spoil you sometimes, Mariana lied, hoping she didn't look too exhausted. It'll be useful for your studies too. Mateo's excitement was the best reward for her. The goal justified all the efforts. Seeing his smile, she felt filled with the strength to keep going further and further. But that energy didn't last long. After about six months, Mariana began to notice that she was struggling to even get out of bed and nothing brought her joy like it used to. From a healthy, positive girl, she had turned into a shadow of herself. On her rare days off, she preferred to stay in bed. She craved peace and most of all, silence. She had gotten used to the noise at work, but it still made her uncomfortable. Aurelio tried to take her out for walks, but he quickly realized that it didn't give her any sense of rest, so he gave up. After all, living in constant stress isn't healthy for anyone. And with chronic sleep deprivation on top of it, Mariana sometimes didn't even notice how time was flying. Days, weeks, and sometimes even months blurred into one endless groundhog day from which there seemed to be no escape. Aurelio was still there, supporting her. One day he offered to help again, but the girl just snapped at him. Please, stop this, she yelled. You know very well that I won't agree, and you still offer. It just makes everything worse. I can handle it, I'm not helpless. Okay, okay, he raised his hands in a gesture of peace. Just calm down, please. I hear you, I won't do it again, I promise. Thank you, she closed her eyes. The brief burst of anger gave her a headache. After that, he simply stayed by her side in silence, trying to provide the exhausted girl with as much comfort as possible. He even took over all the household chores so she could sleep longer. And yet Mariana sometimes wondered if it was all worth it. Especially when she noticed that her beautiful long hair was horribly split and looked like straw without proper care. At both of her jobs, she usually tied it up in a bun, which wasn't good for it either. Her once healthy body had become thin and worn out. It was a real shock to her. If before she just felt tired, now she clearly saw the consequences of exhaustion. The first time she found almost a handful of hair on her brush, she was horrified. She couldn't help but think of her mother after her first chemotherapy session. It took her a long time to calm down. Sometimes she wanted to give it all up when apathy overwhelmed her. Was it worth it to push herself so hard? Would she be able to recover from such a life or would she just ruin her health? 
she had no answer to that question. Moreover, she was terribly afraid of it. What if all the changes in her body were irreversible? What if she got seriously ill? How would she cope? What if she died? Mateo would be left all alone. How would he handle that? All these questions swirled in her mind, giving no peace to the already exhausted girl. In addition to energy drinks, she also started taking tranquilizers because without them, panic would overcome her time and again. Her condition was becoming increasingly unstable, which frightened her. Could it really go on like this? After all, she had once already been on the verge of quitting. She almost entered her boss's office when an image of her mother flashed before her eyes. Mariana knew how hard it had been for her mother, but she never allowed herself to give up or settle for less. And if her mother didn't give up, Mariana felt she had no right to either. That's why she never went through with it, and to punish herself for a moment of weakness, she took on several additional shifts, depriving herself of rest entirely. For nearly a week, she barely made it home, running from one job to another. Yet, she still managed to check in with her brother to get the latest news, and she even sounded quite cheerful. If you didn't see her in person, you would never believe how exhausted she really was. Mariana had become an expert at masking all signs that she was far from okay. Mariana herself didn't know where she found the strength not to collapse from exhaustion, but she believed that her late mother was helping her. And if that was the case, she was sure she could get through it. Besides, it was only temporary, wasn't it? She would save up the necessary amount and return to her old life. But would that old life still exist? Would she be able to stop? Would she find a reason to keep pushing herself to the brink in the name of supposedly noble goals? Would her psyche recover? It was holding up only because of Aurelio, after all. He was Mariana's lifeline. Even though she hadn't given a clear answer to his feelings, he still stayed with her and tried to surround her with comfort. She could rely on him and share all her worries and thoughts with peace of mind. He calmed her down when she had nervous breakdowns. He cradled her in his arms like a child, reassuring her that everything was actually okay, that it would all end soon, and she would be able to rest however she wanted. He even secretly added small amounts of money to her savings, hoping the tired girl wouldn't notice. Sometimes she did notice discrepancies, but she blamed it on her own absent-mindedness. And she figured it was better to have more than less. So, when are you going to finish this thankless job? He asked when they counted the money together, secretly watching her frown as she counted the bills. Just a little longer. Three more months and I can stop, Mariana assured him, sleepily rubbing her eyes. I miscalculated again. There turned out to be much more here than I thought. You wouldn't believe how happy that makes me sometimes. I can imagine. I'm always happy when I find a couple of hundred extra bucks in my wallet. I wish these three months would fly by, he sighed, noting with displeasure that she had lost weight again. You look like a ghost. I'll paint a face with makeup, she waved him off, not wanting to discuss the unwelcome topic any further. She was also eagerly waiting for the end of her self-imposed drudgery. Aurelio just rolled his eyes. He couldn't stand her nonchalant attitude, but persuading Mariana to sleep instead of taking another shift was a lost cause. That very night, she headed off to her next shift. She was preparing to go out into the hall on autopilot. Every move she made indicated that she was running on automatic and hadn't thought about what she was doing for a long time. With a practiced motion, she gathered what was left of her thick hair into a bun and headed to the tables. The loud music had long since become just background noise to her, albeit occasionally annoying. She used to love this kind of music, but now she would have preferred silence. Do you live here? The new administrator stared at her as if he had seen a ghost. Sometimes it feels like I do, she sighed, adjusting the tray for comfort. The man wanted to say something else, but someone was already waiting for her at one of the tables. He sighed, not understanding why she worked so much. Something seemed off today. Mariana noticed that everything was irritating her terribly. If she had previously been indifferent to the customers, today she almost despised them. 
Could people really afford to spend such enormous amounts just to have fun for a couple of hours? How could they spend what were sometimes astronomical sums on alcohol? Didn't they have anything better to spend their money on? Such extravagance seemed blasphemous in comparison to people like her. Mariana did her best to push away the angry thoughts and tried to smile, even if it was just a polite smile. Sincere ones were out of the question long ago. As if on purpose, a large and cheerful group ended up in her section, ordering more and more. Because of them, she was barely managing to serve all the tables and felt twice as tired. She didn't even want to look at the faces of those who could afford to be so carefree. And why should she? It was clear enough that they were just the usual rich kids, gathered to have a good time. Nothing new. For them, a night out at a club was probably just part of their normal routine, not a special occasion they had saved up for. She also thought about Matteo. How lucky it was that he didn't have anyone in his circle who could drag him into such seedy places. And her brother said he was too busy preparing for exams anyway. These thoughts made her feel warmer and gave her a bit more strength. Finally, the large group asked for the bill, and Mariana sighed with relief. Besides them, there was no one else in her section, so she was hoping for a short break until the end of her shift. She was stunned when she collected the payment. No, everything was in order. What shocked her was the size of the tip left behind. She hadn't earned as much in an entire shift as they left in tips. Who could be so wealthy as to not only pay the bill, but leave so much extra? For the first time that shift, Mariana looked up to see the guest's face. Her eyes widened in horror because right in front of her was Matteo. The young man looked bewildered. Apparently, he hadn't recognized the waitress either, engrossed as he was with his friends. She took a deep breath, ready to launch into an angry tirade, but Matteo raised his eyebrows in a pleading way. Mariana understood that he was asking her not to make a scene in front of his friends. She was furious, but she fulfilled his silent request. She simply couldn't refuse him. The rest of the shift passed quietly. The next day she had a day off from both jobs, so she didn't take any extra shifts. She wanted to find out from her brother. Maybe it was all some kind of mistake, and he was just passing the bill to her, not paying it himself. Deep down, Mariana hoped it was all a stupid accident. However, that didn't stop her from bursting into tears in front of Aurelio as she told him about the incident. She felt betrayed and used. The worst part was that it was done by her own brother, the only person she loved unconditionally. And I didn't even take an extra shift for tomorrow, she concluded her story, sniffling. Good for you. You'll get some sleep, rest, and talk to Matteo. Maybe it's not as bad as it seems, the guy carefully chose his words, seeing how much the situation had hurt his beloved. Thank you for being here, Mariana smiled, squeezing his hand. She really appreciated Aurelio and everything he did for her. Despite all the exhaustion and stress, the girl didn't fall asleep right away. She kept thinking about today's encounter with her brother, about what was really going on. She wondered how she would move forward after this. What would her mother say if she knew about this situation? She would surely have found the right words to comfort her, and she would have scolded Matteo. Gently, in her own way, but still... I need to sleep, she mumbled, turning over to the other side. Things will look different in the morning. She woke up well past noon and was surprised to find that she had actually slept well. Not surprising, considering she had gone to bed at dawn and hadn't set an alarm. Her phone's display showed missed calls from Matteo and several messages from him as well. He was asking to meet up promising to explain everything and begging her not to make any rash decisions, but to hear him out first. After reading all the messages, Mariana sighed. On the one hand, she did want to listen to her brother, but on the other, she simply didn't have the energy for it. Who knows what this truth might be and whether she could accept it so easily. She put her phone aside and got on with her day. She tried her best to ignore further calls and messages from Matteo, but he was very persistent. Unable to reach her, he somehow got Aurelio's number and started bombarding him instead. 
After the tenth ignored call, Aurelio couldn't take it anymore and asked her to deal with her brother. Avoiding the issue was no longer an option, especially since she needed to confirm her work schedule at the nightclub and she couldn't give a clear answer without this conversation. I'll come over in an hour, her brother's voice sounded quiet and guilty. Okay, Mariana reluctantly agreed. She was truly scared to see him. What if he was no longer the Mateo she knew and loved? No longer the younger brother she had raised and cared for? The whole time before the meeting, she nervously got herself ready, as if seeing herself in the mirror for the first time. Where had her rosy cheeks and the sparkle in her eyes gone? Where were the beautiful cheeks her mother used to pinch lovingly? How had she ended up in such a pitiful state? And could Aurelio still love her like this, without demanding anything in return? She felt ashamed and sick of herself. Mariana promised herself that from that day on, she would take better care of herself. Mom wouldn't like the way I look, she said, turning her gaze away from the mirror. She took better care of herself, even in the hardest times, and looked healthier without makeup than I do now. She realized, with a horrible clarity, that she wasn't obligated to do any of this. She wasn't Mateo's mother or guardian. She was just his sister, who was supposed to love him unconditionally and help when she could, not go through hell. How foolish she had been to take it all on herself. Her self-criticism was interrupted by the doorbell. She took a deep breath and went to open the door, mentally preparing herself to hear Mateo confirm her worst fears. They sat in silence for about half an hour, not knowing how to start the difficult conversation. Finally, Mateo spoke. I need to confess something to you. Honestly, I should have done it much earlier, but I was scared, Mateo winced. It was clear he was deeply ashamed before his sister. Can you listen to me without interrupting? All right, Mariana nodded, nervously twisting a napkin in her hands. Thank you, Mateo gave her a timid smile and began his story. I know it wasn't easy for you and mom with me, and I'm grateful for everything you did for me. That's why, when mom mentioned that she wanted me to study where she did, I decided to go along with it. To make her happy, at least in that way. When she passed away, I was determined to fulfill her dream at any cost. Mariana listened in silence as he confessed. It turned out that Matteo had indeed enrolled in the university but barely lasted a month there. Every day he felt out of place, so he simply withdrew. He wanted to tell his sister everything, but he thought she wouldn't understand, that she'd be angry and force him to go back. At the same time, his friends, whose families were a bit wealthier, decided to start a business together. He didn't want to be left out, so he couldn't think of anything better than to invest Mariana's money into the project. Things started picking up pretty quickly, so I wasn't worried that the money would go to waste. At this point, telling you was even scarier. You see, you gave me money for education, and I invested it in a business that, at least to you, seemed dubious. And he really didn't know that she had suffered so much to get that money. Mateo had genuinely believed that she had found their mother's hidden savings for his education. It was something Senora Caldera would do, not liking to keep all her savings in one place. Mariana couldn't believe her ears. At first, she really wanted to be outraged that he had dropped out, but then she noticed the fire in her brother's eyes as he talked about the business he had invested in. There was no secret stash, she said wearily, waving her hand. I worked like a horse at night this whole time. I convinced myself that I had to get you through school and completely forgot about myself. If I had only known that, I would never have taken that money. I would have found a way to earn it myself. But as usual, I thought everything had been decided for me. By the end of the conversation, they were both crying. It was a special kind of release from their secrets. It was hard for both brother and sister to keep something so important from each other. Even though they hadn't lived together for a long time, they never stopped being the closest people to each other. Mateo told her everything in detail. He hadn't planned to tell her that he had dropped out of school. He had even asked Aunt Delfina not to say anything to his sister. It was hard to keep it all inside, so he was relieved that everything had come out and that he could unburden his soul to his sister. And yet, 
He was tormented by guilt when he noticed the changes in Mariana. She was so exhausted that he barely recognized her. The realization of his guilt hit him hard. I'll pay you back every penny, I promise, he squeezed his sister's hand. The business is doing well, so I'll return everything, I swear. I believe you, Mateo, she squeezed his hand in return. And in that instant, a huge weight lifted from her fragile shoulders. That same evening, Mariana called the nightclub to quit her job. When she ended the call, it felt as if huge wings had spread behind her back. Mariana was truly free. When she received her paycheck for the days she had worked, she firmly decided that she would spend every penny on herself. That's why she took a vacation from her main job, and she and Aurelio took off for the ocean. She covered most of the expenses herself as a thank you for the support he had given her. He didn't mind, but he kept trying to pay for things himself. This led to a couple of arguments, which, however, were quickly resolved. It was there, by the ocean, that he proposed to her. They were gazing at the ocean at night. Aurelio got down on one knee, and under the light of a myriad of bright stars, he opened a small but incredibly important box for both of them. She couldn't hold back her tears. Of course, she said yes. How could she refuse the one who had already been with her through thick and thin, the one who had waited for her so long and so faithfully? Of course, she couldn't. From that day on, her new life began, a life much easier than before. She would never forget the path she had traveled and was determined to overcome any challenges fate might throw her way. 